Hi, and welcome to Admentum Courseware. My name is Crystal, and today I'll be walking you through Gradebook and some of its educator-friendly features. To start off, we're going to kick it off with Administrator Gradebook, which is a way for administrators to manage Gradebook for the entire account. So I'm going to go over here to Administration Center. Now, under Administration Center, uh, you are able to manage the gradebook for the entire district or for all programs, the entire account, whichever you need to do right here from the gradebook dropdown. And what you're able to do is uh, manage the permissions, the categories and weights that exist in the courses. Also, you're able to set up the grading scale and apply those to the courses and track credits. I'm going to start with gradebook permissions. And then this area, you'll see that you can apply permissions that can be applied at the, at the account and the program level. Now, each program can either follow the account level permission or can be set to a custom um, a setting where they have program specific permissions. So right here under account permissions, you'll see I have the permission that allows instructors, program administrators to edit the grading scales. I can turn that on or off if I need that. Also, we have the categories and weights that they can uh, manage. I can turn allow that or disallow it by unchecking this box. Um, credit permissions, allowing them to be able to give award credit to students. If you turn that permission on or if you allow that permission, instructors and program administrators will be able to um, grant credit to students for, uh, for a course. And then also we have the drop score permission. The drop score just allows teachers, uh, program administrators to be able to go into uh, a grade book and drop a score maybe on a test that they didn't do too well on or a homework assignment, whatever score they don't want to be a part of the grade anymore. That drop score permission allows educators to be able to manage that. The same settings exist under the program level. So again, it can be managed at the account or the program level. If I choose program, you can see that I can customize which programs are able to follow their own permissions versus which ones will follow, like summer school here, will follow the account gradebook permissions. So a really cool feature that just gives you flexibility into um, allowing um, control over the gradebook and who has that control. Now also here under gradebook, we have categories and weights. Under categories and weights, you'll see that you're able to set account templates for all your active or inactive sessions. So what you'll see is you have all your um, courses and the number of active sessions. I don't have any active right now, but as the year is coming about, I could definitely set my permissions for this accounting course, I'm sorry, set my uh, grading policy for the accounting course, that template will be set up for all classes. I just click right there on view and edit, and then I can choose how the course is weighted, if it's weighted by category, equal weighting, um, no weighting at all. And then once I choose that, I'm gonna just choose weight by category here, I'm able to set what the weighting is for each module, what the weighting is for all the discussions, things like that. I also have the option to save this as the preferred grading setting, which will allow any new um, course sections to, they'll have to follow this grading policy. And if I wanna apply it to any sections that I have currently active, I'll just hit this apply these uh, settings to all active sections and it'll make that change right there. It will show, show you the changes that are being made, which right now I don't have any, but you will just confirm that with that yes. And it gives you a nice timestamp at the bottom so you know um, who last made any changes there. Okay, and I always recommend just using this area here to filter down those selections. Um, you can do this again for the account and the program level. Also, take a look at the grading scales and the track credits. I'm going to go ahead and move forward into the actual gradebook so we can take a look at that. And to access a gradebook, you'll go into Courseware here, and then you'll choose your program. So I'm going to go into the Cedar Ridge program because I know it has data in it. And I am logged in as an account administrator. However, um, teachers also have access to their own gradebook. They'll just go right here to menu and then they'll go to the My Course Sections page and the gradebook will exist on their um, My Course Sections page. For an account administrator, I'm going right here to Manage Courses. And this is similar to how the 
teachers will see it. They'll see a listing of their courses. And then if they click on the course, they'll see all their course sections under that course. So there's that accounting course. And for each course section, there is a grade book. So I'm going to go actually to this computer programming course section here. And I have five students in this uh, that have credits earned, but I have 12 enrollments. If I click on open gradebook, I'm taken very quickly to the gradebook for that section. So we have a lot going on here, and if you needed some uh, some additional details about what each of these um, items mean, you could just look right here at the status legend. You'll see that exempted items have a E next to them, dropped items have a um, red or pink uh, highlight over them, and then any approved courses have an approved banner next to them. So there's a lot going on there. You also have a search bar where you can search for students. So if you have a long list of students and you need to search for one of the students and just quickly pull them up, you can just start typing their name and hit enter, and then it'll take you directly to that student, which is really cool. Also here in the students area, we see the student's current and course grade. Right now, the student doesn't have a current and course grade. Um, and that is just because uh, the student hasn't really been working and because um, what the student has worked on so far, there's not a waiting for it. Um, I just know this because it's my account, but of course, most of the time you will see a current and course grade here. Kind of like Joe Thompson, Joe Thompson has a current and course course grade. His current grade is his grade to date, meaning all the activities that he's worked on so far um, are all are uh, averaged here. And his course grade is all the activities plus all the ones he hasn't completed. Um, if he completed nothing else, this would be his course grade here. So it factors in zeros for any place that um, a student hasn't earned a score. At the end of a course, of course, you want the current grade and the course grade to be the same thing. Also, we see the student's total time on task. So I can see Joe has spent a total of 49 hours, 28 minutes, and 10 seconds, which is really nice. I can see his scores. I can see he has two drop scores here. And this, uh, these activities actually have been dropped from the entire class. That's very easy to do. All you have to do is actually just hover over the, um, the activity and double click. Well, just click one time and then hit the drop score button and you, that score will be removed from the current and course grade for uh, the students. Now, if you want to just drop one student from one score from a student, you can actually just double click on the score and then choose the drop score option. So if I wanted to drop this 90 for Ms. Candace Shelberg, I would just hit drop score and that would remove the score for Candace and it would no longer impact her grade. While we're here, you can see that I'm able to edit the score. If I want to manually input a score for a student, I can do that by just typing in the number and hitting enter. It'll load and save, and then any altered scores will appear with this circle around them. And we can see that right here in the legend. It gives us that information. Also, if we scroll up here, you see we're able to run some reports. We can run some class level reports. I'm going to call out our gradebook report card as a new one we have. It's available to you in HTML and CSV, which is an Excel type file. You can run those for your classes or you can run them individually for students right here. So you'll just click those three dots. There's that gradebook report card. It's a really nice report. If we open that one up for the student, you'll see that it shows all of the student's data point information and everything re regarding her class performance. So I can see the number of activities she completed, her current time on task, um, I'm sorry, her total time on task, her current grade, and her course grade. And I'm also see, able to see the number of activities and the weighting for each activity. So also here in the gradebook, we have um, the ability to manage the gradebook from the course level. So if the account administrator and the program administrator has not set any um, specific permissions disabling uh, an educator from managing their own gradebook, then an educator can actually just go into the settings here and select the, uh, again, the categories and weights, the grading scales. They can also manage credit. And a really new feature, a really feature, a feature I'm excited to tell you about is this manage optional activities, which I'm actually going to go right into there.
Now, when we look at this Manage Optional Activities, if you've been with Courseware before, you know that you've only ever been able to add three optional activities. And these are activities that don't exist in Courseware, but you want to include them as an activity within your course so that that waiting or students um, waiting encompasses those additional activities that you give. And typically we see these as like attendance, extra credit, or any projects, or maybe some um, additional assignment that was given to the student. But you'll see that you can set up an optional category for these activities. Now you'll see that also it will show you the number of activities that are in each category. You can always add to that. So right now I have an attendance category that's giving, um, it's giving five activities of weighting of 5%. I can go and change those activities down here. So if I don't want it to say attendance, or if I want to change any of these categories, I can do so. This can say, you know, project one. This could also say, you know, project two. Maybe we have, and then maybe another practice. I can add to that just by clicking this button. It'll change the number of activities there, um, but I can add in as many as I like. I can also reorder them. So if I want them to exist in a certain order um, on my gradebook, I can do that. Once I add all those activities and I have them ordered the way I like, I can just choose Save Changes here. And then if we look at the back of my gradebook, I have those, um, those that a category. So that attendance category, I have my attendance score, attendance two score, and then I have those extra activities. I also have that extra credit and that uh, activity three optional category, which right now doesn't have anything in it. But I can go in and add those scores into my grade book as my students complete them, which will factor it into their final grade here. So that is pretty much grade book. Um, feel free to reach out to our customer support department if you have any questions, specific questions about the gradebook. Also, I recommend that you uh, check out the What's New page so that you stay up to date on what exactly is being released in Courseware and specific to gradebook. You can find the What's New page on the Edmentum website. You'll just hover over products and then choose What's New. You'll see a listing of our programs where you can filter by program or you can click the Learn More button which will take you to all of the programs. You can see by just toggling through each program, what's new or coming soon for each um, program. Well, that is it. Thank you for joining.